Yo, what's up, guys? It's um, Claps here, and today we're gonna be teaching you how to make a message GUI. Um, hopefully, a um, I mean, an example will show up on the screen before you start watching this. So, what you want to start to do is go to Star GUI. You want to make a screen GUI. Uh, just name it anything. I would message it. I mean, make it message GUI. Then I'll add a frame. I'll maybe call it message frame i just need to um, make it so i remember this so we're gonna make it so it fits on all mobile stuff so i accidentally did it wrongly it's my bad did it on the wrong axis so, uh, i might do it here it's good i'll make it black and a bit transparent just to make it seem better i'll add it also add a ui corner maybe make I'll maybe make this like 24. Yeah, that's better. Alright, uh, what we can add, I want to make this like really professional so um, we can make this so it has an image label which will come up as the player. So I'll make this point. looks good i might make it a bit bigger maybe make it 62 by 62 that looks a lot better now so at the moment this should fit mobile as well yeah uh this might be a little while this tutorial because this is professional i'm gonna add a local script to this because this is a gui and i want to make this um like the picture of the player and um I'll make this like the tutorial to do this as well. So what you want to do is you want to make a variable for the player. So do that game dot players dot local player. What you then want to do is you have to do game dot oh, players. You do you do get thumbnail get user thumbnail a sync so that gets the thumbnail of the player. So then you just have to do player.user ID. So basically, if there were multiple people to join this game, it would only come up for their picture because the player is the person who runs the script. This is the local player. This is the person who owns the script. So then now their player ID would be um, whoever's playing. So what you want to do now is you want to do a comma and you want to do enum. You have to make sure you do enum. Dot thumbnail type dot you can do anything i recommend headshot uh but basically the difference between here will come on sh screen right now i'll just quickly get a snipping tool to help me with that one but um yeah i i like headshot headshot's good because it only captures the head so then next you have to do the size so enum dot thumbnail size dot size 420 by 420 i usually use 420 by 420 I don't know why, it's just um, set it to the image. That is my bad, guys. And that image equals. Ah, that's my bad, guys. I forgot to set it to the image. So now we should get a nice um, avatar of ourselves. But let's say we were going to make like a test with two players. I'll well, just make it one because it's not for me to start. We'll wait for this to load now and um, yeah. And I've got these spare scripts on me as well, just in case, just to make sure I remind myself, which did help me. So, um, yeah, we've got the server, now we've got place one. So, it doesn't seem to come up, which is bad. Player one, message to you. That's interesting. Anyway, I'll test it out in the end just to make sure it works in an actual game, but at the moment it seems to work fine. Oh, sorry, I'm in the wrong game. Let's just test whether this works in them. Um Alright, so it still works in main one. Don't know what that is, maybe something to do with the testing servers at the moment. 
But um, yeah, so now this is when we can get to the actual typewriting thing. As well, by the way, we will be making this a tween GY as well, and also make it when we press a certain letter on our keyboard. Or unless I can make um, I can use the same tutorial to show whether if you want a button to do the same thing. So I'll show both ways: add a button to launch us up, or your keyboard. So um, now what we need to do is I'm probably gonna add a text label here that's gonna be like i'm gonna make it point one i'm gonna make it probably this size for now once again i've put the axis wrong i'm gonna put this here i'm gonna, I'm gonna put text scaled i'm gonna make this gotham bold because i think it looks very nice make it white as well and i'm gonna make this go to the left so the player's name can stretch out here but it's always on the left because if we put it here in the middle, it's gonna end up looking funny. So, uh, I'd like to do that. So now, we should have something that looks like that. I might put it up a little bit. What we're also gonna do is, I'm gonna make another variable for this script called local player equals game.players.localplayer. This is just easy, script.parent.text equals player.name. This might not work, guys, and I might know why. It, well, I don't need to, actually. It does work fine. That's what I like to see. Don't like errors. And also, just to make it a bit better, I'm going to do this, because obviously it was making a message, so we're going to have to um, add the colon at the end. So there we go. So now we can get the typewriting stuff. So now we can get the... I'm just going to name this message which will then i'll make it about nah, okay point seven i might make it point seven at the moment let's just see how it works oh whoops it's my bad oh guys it's my bad i i did it on off sir by accident silly me all right then we're gonna do this now same as last time we're gonna make this zero we're gonna add text scaled as well because if you put it to a certain size guys if you go on a mobile it will stay the same size so let's i put this here and made it 28 it would, it, i mean let's just put it on 100 actually it would come out there like that and then it would come out really big on here but not as big looking on here so that's why you always want to use text scaled so then it scales perfectly for the device you're using. Same, I'm gonna use Gotham Bowl. I'm gonna take the changes to white to fit them for the background. I might add a text stroke. Yeah, I might do. Um, now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna make like a function thing, but first I've gotta make some variables. So local message equals script.parent. Well, we might actually make this message text just to not mix ourselves up okay what we want to do now is we can do a local function so this is a function i'll run through the script and i'm going to make it type right and we're going to need two things for this and how i'll make another tutorial on on the, um, local functions and how they work but um i'm just going to do object then text all right so basically what we're going to do is object dot text Oh, that's my bad, guys. We missed something. We need to do for i equals one. You gotta do. Oh, sorry about that. Ah, guys, I need to go on a US keyboard. They quick for this. Text. So these will be the amount of digits that are in the text. That's for one. Do I believe this is the right code? It might not be my bad if it ain't, but like. What I what I'm sure it is, it'll it'll go one digit at a time to change. This will be the amount of digits is changing, which is the text, and it will start at the first digit. So then we do object dot text equals string dot. Oh my bad. 
sub and then we do one text one I think this is I'm pretty sure this is but it's fine if I'm wrong I might have a little check actually type I we need to make sure text I that's my bad guys oh silly Nina one I basically what this is is like um you just sub the string so then it'll do to text so it will bring the what's already on the text that's been done it'll go up by one and it will be i which is the current digit we're on to add on and then we just have to do wait 0 0.05 i believe if we check this we use yeah so basically this is just a type rate function at the moment to make the type rate actually work now what we're going to do is make it so it runs what we want to do is just do type right but because we're not like doing anything at the moment this is just like the part to make the type line work as you can see in here it says object text one sec it should oh that's my bad type right object and text which is here so the object will be the text label which will be message text and in here is going to be the value of what the text is going to be. So like, hi, I, oh, bad spelling. Hi, I am, oh, I'm going to do that as well. you got to make sure you do spaces, otherwise it'll come out looking funny. Pl hmm, that's my bad as well. I've forgotten the player variable. This is why var variables are already good, because you can use them throughout the script. Okay. Can you do a fake? Oh, bad spelling. For oh, Jesus, I'm bad. All right, for me. So this is going to be the text, which is hi, I am player dot name. But the thing is, right? I don't think this will work. Let's check. They might work because. There is no comma, so I'm pretty sure it should work. There we go, it works. So basically, I can explain the script for you. So basically, the object and text is um, in the function for i equals one with the amount of digits in the text, or like letters, I mean, sorry. And then it basically starts at one, how many letters there are, and, it'll, um, and it starts at the first one and goes up by one. So then object.txt equals string.sub. I'll go on to string.sub at the end. But kinda, you just like, it's the text here. So the amount, like that's been done so far. It'll go up by one. What? And it'll like end in I. Base, that'll be I, basically. I'm not sure, but like that's um, pretty much what I understand. And basically, because it's a for loop, will loop for every digit um so i need to stop saying digit for every letter of the text so it will loop around one two three four five six seven eight so this little bit is eight because it includes the spaces as well so um playing on them so one two three four five six nine ten eleven twelve thirteen so thirteen 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, and 42. So it will for loop this 42 times. And because obviously, if you remove this weight here, it'll instantly write the text. You won't even see the typewriter effect. You have to do a weight here, and it has to be little because let's say you change this to like one right here it would type right really slowly so you don't want that to happen so i would i would say oh, i would say you put this no bigger than 0 0.1 i think 0 0.1 is the max there 
I'm not gonna lie, I still that still looks a bit slow. Zero point five. I think zero zero point zero five definitely does me. Actually, it seems a bit fast, guys. You could just like mess around with this, like to be honest. But like, I would say like about zero point zero seven five would do. No, that seems a bit slow. I'm gonna just put it on 0 0.6. It doesn't matter entirely. But uh, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna add a new variable called local open bind. This is gonna be just a key bind. So enum dot key code dot. Mm, what would we like to put to um open up a uh, section? Let's just do R at the moment because I don't wanna reach over my keyboard. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make another variable as well. I'm gonna do services just to make it make sense. I might do this as well. Um, so these are the services. So we're gonna do local, and then we're gonna do uis equals game get service user oh, user input service. So this is like the service when an input is gone so this controls all the inputs on your keyboard and mouse so let's do uis dot input began so this is when something is pressed on your keyboard right, connect function oh can't spell today we're gonna do nothing else we're just gonna do this let's just leave this right now what we're gonna do if we're gonna do if number one we're gonna do object object game pro oh, game process so we're gonna do if game processed then if object dot key code equals open bind then so basically if the key code or oh sorry needs to be equals equals so the thing about if statements always need to be equals equals basically if the game is processed then basically the object will be like what you press on your keyboard like the, your actual keyboard and when it's pressed if the key code which is what you've pressed on your keyboard equals equals open bind which is dot key code dot r then so basically this is when um r has been um pressed and i'll put this here so now you need to press r before it starts the so now if we move around r hmm it doesn't work i'm gonna add print i'm gonna add a print to just do game processed and see if it's something to do with game processed if it is we'll just remove it for now Let's try again. So it seems to be something with game processed. Okay, for now we'll remove game processed. I know it sounds a bit silly, but basically like we're just gonna do it this way. Oh. What have I done? Hi, that's my bad there. I've accidentally cut it all out. Oh crap, it's my bad. So basically now, if it's the open bind, I hope this should work now. I think game process is a little bit dodgy at first. So now, there we go. When we press R, um, it's, I'm just gonna print, open bind has been pressed. They're playing now, and now we should see it print that our oh, open bind has been pressed. So we press other keys on the keyboard. Oh no, we press R, open bind has been pressed. There we go. So now we know this works. So now what we want to do is. What I generally want to do is, I want to like make like a new function that tweens your GUI. So I'm gonna do 
local frame equals script dot parent dot parent. So that's the frame. Mm, what's going on? Oh yeah, this. Okay. Local function tween, which will be the frame. And then position. So I believe I can, I don't know if I can use Udem2 in this. I'll try, if I can't, and we'll just figure it out. Actually, we might leave the position for now, because I'm only using one, so. This might be, this probably ain't the best way to do it, but if frame.position equals equals udem2 dot new this that i'm just gonna do then i'm just basically doing a script where like when you press r it goes back in and stuff but when you press r it's obviously type rights as well but then we're gonna do frame tween position i'll do more about tweening in another video but basically udem2 dot new we're gonna do we're gonna get this number one sec gonna get this but instead we're gonna put this to one because when it's one it will be down and you know it so i'm gonna make it nice so i'm gonna make it an out as well i might put it back to uk keyboard because it's annoying me gonna put and We've got to put a comma after everyone. I'll teach you on another video though. I don't want it to be linear. I don't want it to go smooth. I want it to be quad because it, it's nice. It's like a little bouncy. Well, not bouncy, but like. It's like a nice. Nice one for tweens. I recommend it. Basically then, we just do this. We do an L statement. And then we just tween position. Just copy this. And do this. So now we, I'm going to put this message frame here, and then I'm going to do tween, and then I'm going to do frame because that's our variable. And I'm going to wait. I'm going to. I might make this 0.75 instead just to make it a bit quicker. Then I'm going to wait the one because obviously it's going to start mid-tween, which will not look good at all. So now if we try this out, it might not work. It might work. We'll just test it out. So if we press R. There we go. And it obviously restarts as well. Looks a bit dodgy though. Obviously, it's a bit glitchy because obviously I'm just spam opening it, but we know that it works now. It goes back and in. Uh, it's a good 44 line script. Uh, but yeah, we basically got it working. Now, all we got to do is get the message thing and take out label because it looks a bit funny. So now, if we press R, open button is being pressed. Hi, I'm Seven Rebounds HD. Can you do a favor for me? Next video, I'll carry on. This will be a part one. I'll make like a system where like you can answer back and stuff. But yeah, I hope you really enjoyed this video, and I'll see you a lot later. See ya. Yo, sorry about that, guys. Sorry for the disclaimer, but I forgot to do what I was meant to do, which was um make it so when you press a button as well, it shows up. So before we end the video, we're gonna be um getting rid of the keybind and stuff. And I'm just gonna like I'm gonna remove this Saturday. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do actually we need to make a variable right for the button. So it'll equal script dot parent dot parent dot open button. Obviously we don't have an open button yet, that's why we are going to make one. I'm gonna add a text button. I'm gonna make it about actually we need to put in the message UI, silly me. Okay, parents, so we're just going to add another parent in there, so we don't get mixed up. 
in the game files. Okay, we're gonna make this open button. We're gonna make this. I'm gonna make this a nice blue color. Probably add another UI corner to it. And I'm probably gonna I'm gonna make it text scaled. I'm gonna make it white with a stroke. Give it goth and bold, and just call it like open open message so at the moment it fits on screens as well it's good good i might make it a bit i'm gonna make it the bottom corner just to make it like a little notification thing it's a bit dodgy with the way it's positioned but it'll do fine for now so now what we're going to do is we've got to do here, obviously it's a blank script, we don't like this at all. Obviously I'm going to take away that. I'm going to do button dot mouse button one click at connect function. Uh, probably capital, capital V, that's not good. Uh, get rid of this and just, yeah, so now we've got like a button. We need to test it out though, because it might not work. Maybe it does. Obviously, we can do the same thing. We can just bring it up and down, up and down. So now, I've actually ended the video here now, guys. I'll see you a lot in the next tutorial. I'll make a part two to make it even more professional. Maybe even make a game out of this. Alright, see you guys.